bro fist to you all it has been a dramatic week but not as dramatic as what is gonna happen next week that's right it's finally happened after 12 long months practically on the anniversary of the destruction of our office we my friends are moving back into our studio something went wrong chris will fix it i'm sure let's uh let's do it here just send the message in case it's not here at chunky something went wrong it'll be fixed during the stream don't worry about it it'll be fixed during the stream we've been playing season of discovery all week we just took our first steps into the raid of course going blind and figuring out the mechanics as we go we got to our shadowy friend dust to dust was the message that was rained down on us. Unfortunately, we stopped because, of course, it is drama time. It's time to go. But on Monday, we are moving back into our studio and we are running a subathon where we are going to be unveiling some tech which has never been seen on Twitch before. Built entirely for you guys. It is going to be really, really fun. We're going to see the entire restoration on there. We will be live 24 hours a day. For as long as you guys allow it, yes, for as long as you guys allow it as we rebuild and come back together and can start finally doing all the things that we've waited so goddamn long for. And that will be beginning Monday morning and we're, you can check in anytime. It's going to be good. It's going to be an adventure to be sure. It's going to be really good. Uh, Christmas day stream, I'm pretty sure... Unless, unless everyone abandons us immediately, we will be live for my birthday, <laughs> which is in a few days. We will be live for my birthday. It should be a, a birthday celebration to share with you guys and have a lot of fun with. It's going to be a really exciting time. We finally have the keys, although my wife dropped them in horse crap. We have the keys. We can get back in. We'll have a van. We'll be doing all kinds of wacky fun stuff. And you guys are going to be front row to have a lot of fun with it. It should be great. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. But that's not why you're here not right, not right now. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys next week. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be good. No YouTube live stream uh, for now. Uh, because something went wrong. <laughs> something went wrong. Uh, so I wonder if I can fix it. Hold on. Uh... I don't see a Chris around. Chris is doing something. Uh, Twitch chat. You put a different box on. I don't know. It'll be fixed later. It'll be fixed later. He's changed some links around or something because we wanted YouTube. Uh, but let's have some fun. Uh, Brex has prepared us the wonderful stories you guys have sent us from around the world from your MMO adventures. Uh, we have, and if you've got something to share with us, which everybody does. Everybody has a story to share with us. Uh, you can send it to drama at preachgaming.com. We always love to hear from you guys, from the weird and wacky and wonderful tales from the years of old to the days of new. Uh, so let's start with a new one. Let's go modern day, I think. Let's do that. Because I just saw a word here. Of course, I do not know the stories before we go in. It is our lovely Bex who checks out the stories, to see if they're uh, worthy and they're fun to be on here uh, with us today. And this looks like it takes place in the season of Discovery season of discovery let's go hi mike bex and the amazing family in chat our wonderful guild in season of discovery the family apologies in advance for my potentially poor english i am british and english is my native tongue but unfortunately i come from birmingham <laughs> Fair enough. i understand i understand you come from the land of greg's uh therefore yes we receive stories from all over the world from every single nationality uh but birmingham is a whole different beast i fully get it i come to you with a short tale but hopefully interesting from world of warcraft's recent season of discovery where you chose a warrior meaning you were the biggest cook in the chat right now You know, if I don't have to interrupt, I'm actually like top DPS. I just want to fucking point that out, all right? I just want to point that out. You don't need to... Sh I mean, fuck you, honestly. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm writing to you just a few days after launch. Warning. This story contains spoilers for one of the steps for discovering one of the Paladin and I think also Warlock Season of Discovery runes. So any of you who are still playing blind, uh, be aware of that. I decided to make myself a dwarf paladin because I'm from Birmingham and I fell on my head. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> That's double whammy. 
Ah, oh, God, the people intentionally making dwarves in Season of Discovery. How fucking sad is that? But I wanted to join you in the family. Despite being almost exclusively Horde since I started playing World of Warcraft during the Burning Crusade. I don't know how successful Mr. T's Night Elf Mohawk WoW TV ad was more wildly, but I worked on at least one person, given I was 12 years old at the time. Wow. Did you even know who Mr. T was? There is no fucking way a 12-year-old knew who Mr. T was. That's insane. I'm not sure I would ever really be known. Oh, it says it here. I'm not sure I would have even really known who Mr. T was. I definitely hadn't seen the A-Team. But I digress. The first step for obtaining one of the Paladin runes is to loot an orb from a table on the top floor of the Tower of Athalax in Northern Darkshore. I wow-headed this because of course I did. And off I go on my level 20 Paladin from Ironforge to Menethil Harbor. The Wetlands run is overhyped as well, by the way. Didn't die once at level 20. I saw you died twice, Mike. Get good noob. The story is very offensive to me personally. I, um, I'm just noticing that we're two paragraphs in. And uh, it, it seemingly is targeting me specifically with a lot of shit here. So there I was. I stepped off the boat in Darkshore. It probably looks as grim and depressing as Britain did when my grandparents arrived after emigrating from India in the 50s. God, I miss the cheerful barons. I miss the barons too. One thing I've discovered through Season of Discovery is we all did go alliance because we are typically horde players because we're not idiots and we want to be able to play with other people in MMOs um, is that the alliance are absolute dog shit and their leveling experience is frankly the most cancerous mess of a fucking spaghetti dish I've ever seen in my life and everything they have to do is inconvenient and awful. Uh, in all ways it's absolutely atrocious and i'm so glad i'm level capped now because it's fucking disgusting every step of the way uh it's just gross and the horde doesn't deal with any of that bullshit at all our first dungeon is just in the city and our next dungeon is in the zone next to it and our third dungeon is in the zone next to the other city like <laughs> It's so easy. I don't understand. I don't understand why it needs to be such a fucking mess. <clears throat> Anyways, I start legging it over to the tower. As I'm wandering over, I notice somebody in general shouting, Looking for more Alphalax Orb! I shift-click their name, and sure enough, there it is. In the pink itself, another paladin, level 21. I was confused by this, though. Darkshore is a level 10 to 20 zone. Why would a paladin, which is already completely overpowered, especially compared to warriors, and outlevels the zone, need any help? I decided this guy must be a pussy. <laughs> and ignore him and go and do it myself. Okay. <laughs> this guy must be a little bitch. <laughs> It would be pertinent to mention now that, although I have played World of Warcraft since the start of 2007, sinking however many thousands of hours into the game in that time, I haven't played Classic outside of playing Hardcore for about a month, and that was released earlier this year. Therefore, although I have a decent amount of accumulated World of Warcraft knowledge burrowed in various parts of my pink squishy Birmingham brain, my knowledge of the pre-Cataclysm world is hazy at best especially on the Alliance side. I just haven't played through them for 13 plus years. So there I am. I reach the tower. I scale its stairs and see a group of maybe five or six players at the base. I notice immediately that almost all of the players, assembled like a two-bit knockoff version of the Avengers, are paladins and some warlocks too. Presumably, Warlocks have a similar step for one of their runes, if not utilizing the exact same item. As soon as I approach, I'm invited to a raid group. Most of the players assembled are in the region of level 16 to 22, with one paladin higher, at the current level cap of 25. Clearly, this guy was a sweaty nerd. <laughs> True. <laughs> a couple of the mobs around the tower aggro onto the group. This confuses me. 
These mobs are about level 17. Why is this now a raid group of people here when the mobs are like level 17? Is it just for peak sweaty efficiency to clear out the tower in 30 seconds? GG, easy game, easy life. Meanwhile, our guy from before is still advertising, looking for more Alphalax Orb in general chat. The raid group increases in size. Players are summoned by the Warlocks. As this process is occurring, I turn my camera around to look into the tower for the first time. Oh, no. Oh, no. I see the situation that has necessitated this whole thing. Inside the tower is a hostile caster mob. And their accompanying Voidwalker friend. Both are level 29. As a reminder, outside of one level 25, the player group is in the region of 16 to 22. The crap scions of the seven dwarves cosplay assembling outside the tower isn't preparing to blitz the tower in five seconds with everybody going on their merry ways. This group, this group that stands before me, is preparing for war. Five more minutes passed, which in classic time is about one second. And the call to arms are repeating throughout the chat. LFM, in, summon! LFM, in, summon! LFM, in, summon! Within those five minutes, 12 stalwart champions of the Alliance stand ready to raise the tower to the ground. Defeat some voidy boys, grab an orb, and head to the Winchester for a nice cold pint and wait for everything to just blow over. The horn of attack is called. The raid charge forth into the breach like the Rohirrim at the Battle of Pelennor Fields. But you don't know what it is, Mike. Yeah, fuck you, man. A more majestic sight has never been seen by human eyes. Is what I wish I could tell you, my friends. Is what I wish I could tell you. Because no, that's a lie and that's not what happened. A few of the group shuffle back and forth at the entrance to the tower like a rubbish Chuckle Brothers. To me, to you, to me, to you. Nobody wants to go first. The mobs in there are level 29 and they're big old boys. They're thick and they're juicy and they're wide walk. They look like they eat unsuspecting noobs for breakfast. Second breakfast, the Levensies lunch, afternoon tea, dinner, supper and pre-bedtime snacks. Eventually... Eventually, one brave soul runs in and just sprints straight up the stairs like the one mate who always needs a piss when it's there round at the pub. What exactly is our plan? There is no plan. We just sent bodies at it into the meat grinder. It's a shit show. Was the sensible option to be slow and methodical, clearing out each mob as we ascended the tower, ensuring the safety of the group? After all, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Forget the sensible option. 2023's Leroy Jenkins is getting to the top of that tower in 10 seconds as if his life depends on it. He must have said something rude to all the mobs he passed on the way because they are all scaling the stairs after him. And they look about as happy as my uncle does when he talks about the liberals. I reach the top of the tower. Do you guys know that gif from Community? The one with Donald Glover carrying the pizza into the apartment to see that everything is literally on fire. This, this was the World of Warcraft version of that. On the top floor of the tower is maybe three of those caster mobs and their voidy boys from the top floor. One skull level named enemy. Remembering that I was level 20. The mobs pulled up from throughout the tower in our intrepid raid group, our group of heroes that had banded together. Now, I mentioned earlier there is no plan. Because there is no fucking plan. People are fighting and dying all over the place. Blood spurting across the screen. Corpses of dwarf legs flying everywhere. There's no priority list. Nobody knows what's the best course of action. And panic is setting in. Some smooth jazz ASMR Roger Brown raid leading was clearly needed at this moment to stop the panic and calm people down. Or maybe some DJ Scripey T raid leading to hype the team up. I don't know exactly what help this team needed, but it needed something to hold these people together. What I didn't mention in that last part is the people who stayed at the back of the group, the smart ones. They waited for the mobs at the top to have feasted 
to have feasted their eyes on another brave, is stupid adventurer. Looted the orb in the midst of the chaos, chaos and then walked out. <laughs> their wisdom was so clear that day. The group wipes and start, hum the, start the humbling corpse run back to the tower. All eight of us. Yes. In the complete chaos, four players had just rocked up, looted the item, and walked the fuck away as easy as can be. They could see what was about to happen, and they knew what to do. Our chat spamming hero says in raid chat, Dudes! Dudes! Wait until everyone is back to the top of the tower. I will do a countdown. We all res at the same time. And then we focus the casters first. My God, friends. There's a plan. A real plan. We have now got a raid leader. The world first is coming our way 2024. You heard it here. We are now assembled and ready. The ghost corpse resemble, reassemble at the top of the tower as if Ebenezer Scrooge is sleeping up there. We're all there. We're all ready. Standing over our lifeless bodies. The countdown is called. Three, two, one, begin. The group resurrect. Fighting breaks out immediately. I immediately notice some players going straight for the orb instead of fighting. <laughs> it's a close fight. But we wipe yet again with a few mobs left standing. Eight become five, as three of the people had ignored the fighting and looted the orb and left the group. Three players who had ignored. Three players who were smarter than I was. Three players with whom we may have had a good chance of winning for everybody and allowing the entire team to get the results whilst dancing on the graves of our enemies. The real fail, though, our spam chat hero, who had been spamming general for no less than 25 minutes at this point, is one of the three who got his orb and left. Another plan is happening. Coordinating a plan to get the rest of the group fighting the enemy so they can leave the item and leave. It turns out the spam chatter was the one who had led the raid group. He had coordinated all of us to throw our faces into these mobs while he himself looted the orb to leave. I want to tell that player now if he's listening to this story. Hashtag I will never forget what you did that day. I sigh upon releasing my spirit. Fully expecting the remaining five to start flaming each other and start quitting the group in annoyance. Leaving me back at square one. But no. No. That's not what happens. One glorious, beautiful message arrives in the raid chat from Chadamus Prime himself, like an oasis in the desert of selfish arseholes. Does anyone still need? Two of the five remaining players say yes, as do I. There are five of us left, three of whom still need to collect the orb. And then a message arrives in chat from Chadamus Prime himself. Bros? I'll pull all the mobs downstairs while you loot the orb. What a fucking hero. What a hero. The next message is from the other player. Wonder Woman herself who has already looted the item. I too will answer the call. I too will pull the mobs to the bottom of the tower. Once more the ghosts assemble at the very top. This time of course five instead of eight. Maybe Scrooge was better behaved this year. Chadamus Prime and Wonder Woman begin a countdown. Chad and Wonder Woman res half a second before the counter hits. They aggro all the mobs and leap down the tower. I don't know the details of what happened on that descent. I really wish I did. But I got that orb. As the mobs ran back upstairs and killed me. All five of us lay dead at the top of the tower. I tentatively, worryingly type, all good. Because I know I'm not going to stick around and help anyone. <laughs> all good is the reply and everyone has the item. 
God bless. I don't know how those two gladiators fended off so many mobs. Ten plus levels above them for so long, but they did. We all accept res sickness in Aberdeen Graveyard. Exchange many a thankful message in raid chat and let's go on our separate adventures. The sequence of events may not have really left any sort of impression on anyone else involved, but all I can say personally is that it made my fucking day. And it reinforced the impression that not everyone in World of Warcraft is as toxic as they say. Chadimus Prime. Wonder Woman. You two are the real heroes, and I wish you all the best on your adventures. Thank you, Mike, for listening to my story. I love you all, and I can't wait to see as many of you as possible at PreachCon 2024. And remember, Mike, warriors will definitely get better in the next phase. I mean, <laughs> uh, I mean, that's a guarantee, right? Let's be fair. It can't get worse. If we really think about it, it can't really get worse. So it should be good. All right. <laughs> I need from my lovely live audience that is now visible on our screen. Thank you, Mr. Chris. Uh, oh, nups. Someone fixed it. I can see some thinking emojis going on in my team's discord. Um, we need two guild names. One is an evil imperial guild and two is a mafia crime guild ladies and gentlemen we are heading to the world of pvp our stars for this tale will be wazin and tyan thank you very much and while those names flood the chat it's the moss vegas heist oh my god is this star wars oh no i feel like it's star wars and we're taking it very seriously. All right, we're going... Okay, one of the guilds can be dust to dust. All right, that could be the evil imperial guild. Dust to dust. Oh, it's our mafia guild. Uh, the Garleans and the Cannolis. <laughs> that sounds racist. I don't think I could do that. Uh, we need a mafia one. The tiny damaged losers. The mafia cats. I mean, that's kind of ruining it. The rat mafia. Tabard cats. The Gabagools. All right, we'll go with the Gabagools. The Gabagools. There we go. We'll go with the Gabagools. I like it. That's good. <laughs> Hello, Mikey. I've been a drama time watcher for a little while now, but this is the first time I decided to send you a tale. I have accrued many drama-filled stories over the years, but for this tale, I'm going to go back almost 20 years to my first ever MMO. A game I believe you've only featured once before. Star Wars Galaxies. With a story I call the Moss Vegas Heist. Okay, this I have never featured this game. There was a tentative plan to play Galaxies on a private server with the community. We have heard from the private server. It is definitely a go. We just need to prepare them because they're very worried we'll kill the server. But uh, it is on the menu at some point probably. Probably. I'm not saying when, but it is a min it's, it's an idea. All right, ladies and gents. I want to give you a couple of background bits about this game so you have some context, because I imagine many of you are WoW and FF14 players and Guild Wars alike. One, Star Wars Galaxies was, in its first couple of incarnations, a skill-based game with no levels and no classes. Each character had 250 skill points to spend between the 30-ish professions, which included combat, battle crafting, and social elements. Each profession took between 90 and 200 points and a couple of million experience to, uh, for, to be max out, meaning you had just enough points to max out two completely different areas and go around halfway of a third. Rifleman Doctor with the defense line from Fencer was a popular PvP build, for example. Players were restricted to one character per server, so the average player who wanted to do a bit of everything might do something like swordsman architect and a bit uh, architect and a bit of musician. Importantly, you could also unlearn skills at any point to free up the points and pick new things. But you would have to regrind all the experience of the intended type from scratch. Number two, Jedi's were announced as being available from launch. But the way of unlocking one was initially completely secret. After about six months, 
there was not a single player in the entire game who had found a way of becoming a jedi the devs were begged the devs were asked the devs devs were requested please give us a hint an in-game item was added named a holocron which when used told you to level a specific profession and then vanished players from here figured out pretty quickly that every character when generated had five different professions randomly chosen from the entire list once you'd learned the master rank of all of them in any order this would unlock the jedi slot on that server allowing you to create a second character that could be a jedi you could use more than one holocron but once you'd hit four out of five on your list all you would get would be the holocron a silent most players at this point would then just go through the list of all their professions at random grinding them to max in turn until they just got lucky this inevitably led to a weird rush for jedi where the server's crafters would be seen out grinding martial arts smugglers could be found dancing for experience in the local cantina or hardened pvp bounty hunters would be caught out in the wild taming animals if i remember correctly you also not every character could be a jedi even if you made the character with the jedi thing you still might not be a jedi it wasn't that a thing i'm pretty sure that was a thing where you just might not be able to be a jedi on your character it's like entirely possible that you could not be one number three star wars galaxies essentially had a hundred percent player crafted item system enemies could drop gear but the stats were always atrocious as such the only loot worth farming was crafting schematics and optional crafting components which allowed a crafter to create a single bespoke item of higher power than usual the most popular farming by far was the crate dragon graveyard of tatooine where enemies dropped by dropped both crate dragon tissue which could be used to create guns and crate dragon pearls which could be used as a particularly strong replacement for a crystal when a jedi crafted their lightsabers <laughs> four and finally star wars galaxies had an absolutely incredible player housing and even player city system i do remember how good it was having been developed by a number of the minds behind ultima online star wars galaxies allowed even more latitude with housing players were free to place buildings which came in various sizes and styles almost anywhere in the open world that wasn't on a sheer cliff face or within a kilometer of a named city or landmark like moss eisley etc when the devs later added player cities and the politician profession this allowed a player to drop a city hall and create a new town for themselves as mayor as long as this didn't encroach on other cities borders depending on the mayor's politician skill and the number of player houses which were set as players home within the city hall's radius different amenities would unlock such as healing and buffing facilities and the coveted instant planetary travel shuttle ports it was awesome <clears throat> my brother played galaxies and he showed me i was outstanding i was the mayor of the uh, city of tat oh well done now i've given you the context to the actual story at the time i'd been playing galaxies for about a year i'd started off on the star cider server as a role player but had been bitten by the pvp bug and ended up joining an imperial pvp player guild called dust to dust and we were notorious on star cider for regularly roaming around in a group of a dozen or more hardened bastards jumping on any rebels we saw those filthy scum regardless of whether they were in a full group of 20 players or if it was one poor fool that had made the error of shooting at a stormtrooper while questing and thus gained the five minute temporary enemy flag we cared not we lived by one motto red equals dead if we couldn't find anyone willing to do pvp we also had a couple of master bounty hunters on the team they could grab a bounty on a player jedi from a terminal send out some probe droids to find which planet the jedi was on find their approximate location and then we would converge on their location to ambush the filthy jedi fun 
And a good way for our dark Jedi players to farm dark side experience. As a side note, while permadeath for Jedi was mooted in development, it didn't make the final game. Though Jedi did uniquely lose experience on death. Given that publicly doing Jedi stuff was what led to them eventually appearing on the bounty terminal, most freshly unlocked Jedi would end up grinding out in the arse end of nowhere in the hope of being hidden for as long as possible. It was surprisingly exactly how Jedi used to act. So this all shockingly had made us very unpopular with all the rebel aligned groups on the server. Naturally, those that owned cities had blacklisted us, meaning that we couldn't enter the public buildings in their cities, travel to or from their shuttle ports, or respawn at their cloning facilities. One such of these was the Gabba Ghouls, the Mos Vegas Mafia, who had banned us from their town of Mos Vegas. That's really funny. They called their town Mos Vegas. That's actually really clever. <laughs> now, normally, we wouldn't give a shit if we were banned from a sea. If anything, it was a badge of honor to have pissed someone off enough to add our whole guild to the ban list. However, Mos Vegas was the only player city in the northwest of Tatooine, and so also the only city within eight clicks of the Crate Graveyard. Meaning that for us, only it was a 10 minute ride on speeder bike from the nearest city to the best farm spot in the game, and thus also a 10 minute graveyard run if any of us died while farming. So one day a message goes up on the private dust to dust forums. Be online at 4 a.m. server time Friday night. Thankfully, that's 9 a.m. for me in the UK. Make sure your character isn't maxed out on used housing slots. I log on at the allotted time and join TeamSpeak. The whole guild is there. Someone asks what's going on. Don't ask questions. Just get your ass to Moss. You'll find out when you arrive. Curious. Curiouser and curiouser. I and the others that happen to log in the guild hall file out, speed to the start port, and grab the next ship to Moss Esper. We wait a few minutes for everyone to file in, and then Wazin, one of the officers, speaks up. Okay. Mount up and ride to Las Vegas. We're going to raid it. At 4 a.m.? Who's even going to be there? Ten minutes or so later, we all arrive in town. An unfamiliar Twi'lek is there waiting for us. Hello, boys, she exclaims. One by one, we all noticed that we were being removed from the town's ban list and all being granted zoning rights in the town. Wazin speaks up again. We don't have a house deed on you that you have space to drop. Trade me for one. Once you have a deed, place it anywhere in the city limits and set it as your home from the house's console. You should all have zoning rights now. But how? See that Twi'lek over there? Wave hello, Tyan. Sure enough... The mystery Twi'lek waves at us. It turns out that at some point a couple of months ago, Tyan, our guild's resident musician, mother with an inexplicable fetish for drummers, had bought another Galaxy's account. She had made an alt on our server with one purpose in mind. Infiltrating the Gabba Ghouls making friends and using her feminine wiles to be added to the officer group. The officer group allowed a mayor to deputize them, giving them the permission to add and remove bans from the town and grant housing rights. I'm still a little confused as to why we're doing this though. Why would we want to do this? Until Wazin gives the final Order 66. As soon as you've got your house placed and set us home, head to the city hall and call a vote of no confidence in the mayor. Once that's triggered, vote for Tyoon as mayor. And this land shall be ours. Motherfuckers. <laughs> Genius motherfuckers, man. Motherfuckers. It's a political shakedown, it is. It's a coup. It's a full coup. The Gabba Ghouls had this prime geography, but they weren't a big guild. 
by bringing our entire guild of m completely madcap PvPers in the middle of the night and setting ourselves as residents, we had enough people to depose their mayor and elect our own as an absolute majority. And there was nothing they could do about it. Within minutes, we'd removed all their members from the militia and banned the whole guild from the town they had founded. That's really mean. That's really, really... Couldn't you just put a town, like, somewhere nearby? That's really fucking mean. That's super... Yeah, that's a dick move. That's a really dick move. Those were a small group of players role-playing as fucking mafiosos in Star Wars. Crush the rebellion. It's top lads. You fucking. <sighs> when they logged on the following day, they were at first confused. And then confusion. <laughs> you Star Wars dickheads. And then confusion turned to anger. Anger turned to furiousness. The server's official forums were soon ablaze and various GM reports were made which went nowhere because everything we'd done was within the rules of the game. Well, that was it. We got away with it. Before long, Tyune took over the cantina as her own personal club, and our Jedi got a much easier path to farm the best materials in the game. Unfortunately, Star Wars Galaxies went to shit a few months later when they dropped a patch that completely overhauled combat for the worse and led me to trying out a new MMO. It had just come out not long prior called World of Warcraft. And ladies and gentlemen, that was the story. That's the story of we completely snecked. And the story of the Moss Vegas heist. We took over that city, kicked out all the residents, got away with it, and then left the game a couple of patches later. Leaving it to ruins. <sighs> Sag. Big sadness. Big that's really mean. That's genuinely just really, really mean. Yeah, it was called uh, Jump to Lightspeed or whatever, the patch that ruined galaxies. The game died, like, so quickly after they released it, that pass patch. Didn't they let everybody be a... Uh, they let everybody be a Jedi and shit, and it just, like, lost all its flavor. <clears throat> Live by the RP, die by it. Yeah, unfortunately so. Guilty. Oh, super guilty. Yeah, they're super guilty. When the raid boss discriminates... <laughs> When the raid boss discriminates. Now, which raid boss discriminates? Hmm. I assume we're in World of Warcraft here. Uh, okay. Let's go. Hello, Preacher! And a Brewfist to your wonderful chat. I'm an avid fan of Drama Time for years now. And as I've been entertained or stupefied by the story shared, I always felt myself fortunate to have never experienced such a drama myself. However... If there is one thing I have felt dramatic over, it's raiding. Even though I'm familiar with it, I know when things are good or bad. It took me at least two expansions to realize I don't really like it. <laughs> In World of Warcraft, that is. The approach and execution of raiding in FF14 has been much better for what I prefer, although I have yet to do savage content or similar for reasons as well, the same reasons that I no longer raid him. Wow. With that being said, however, I have very dramatic and traumatic memories of the one time I became totally dedicated to raiding in a guild. And it is my personal experience of that journey I would like to share with you all. Before I go into the details, I would be remiss of me not to share a summary of my journey through WoW, which would also explain why I ultimately prefer not to do any of the raiding. I started playing in the twilight hours of Wrath of the Lich King. Mm. And I was yet still leveling up when the Cataclysm arrived. I was initially going to play a Horde character, but my cousins convinced me to roll Alliance as they're way better. <sighs> sad. Just sad. And so my first character ever, my first main character, was, and I know, you're going to judge me, and it's not a shocker. Alright, what is it? We haven't got an age, right? We don't know how old you are. Okay. Uh, human paladin? No, worse. It's the night elf hunter. Yeah, you know it's gonna be. It's the night elf hunter. I did it! My first ever, 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 ever WoW character during the beta was a night elf hunter. 
Memes aside, that Hunter has been one of my most versatile and favored characters, and I still play as that character to this day. In fact, this may be a genuine shocker for you, but I'm the kind of player who doesn't like to have a main character. Playing as different classes and roles keeps the content I play fresh, and the variety of combat styles and specs keeps it spicy. The only time I have enjoyed playing a main was my Demon Hunter in Legion. Ew. Otherwise, my ideal goals in the game are to level up my crew of characters in the first patch of the expansion, and then gradually gear them up in the next patch onward. As of Dragonfly, I currently play 15 characters round robin, representing all the classes with an extra warrior and paladin, because I enjoy them a lot. You're actively gearing 15 characters? Holy shit. 15 characters. Double paladin, double warrior. Poof. That's heavy. With so many characters to play in the way of gearing this, uh, and the way gearing's been this expansion, I've gravitated to focus most of my gameplay on world quests, or events, and M+. All of my characters have delved into the dungeons this previous season in 10-1, except for my rogue who i only pvp on between my tendencies and the amount of commitment and preparation for it i have found it natural to stay away from raiding as it would consume too much time 15 characters consumes too much time okay okay that's what's you if you drop a couple you might be able to slip the odd pug in right if you just let a couple go how long does it take you to even open your boxes at the end of the week it's like a two-hour process I did dabble in it for a bit in Legion, but the guild my Demon Hunter was in had a mindset to skip normal mode completely and just do heroic from the start. What made it worse is we didn't have enough players for a full raid. So we would not do normal and instead do heroic and blow our raid party with pugs. Are you absolutely sure you don't dislike raiding? You've just raided with dickheads? Because that's not what's supposed to happen, is all I'm going to point out. <laughs> is it just possible that you've just been raiding with morons for the whole time? I raided today. It was really fun. We had a good time. We killed some turtles. It was all good. Now, as you can imagine, Mike, I didn't enjoy most of that. In fact, the most fun I had raiding in Legion was pugging normal in Antorus. And I fondly remember the one time my warrior tanked a raid while role-playing as the captain of a doomed crew seeking to, seeking to vanquish the terror. Well, that's the story for another time. Okay. <laughs> Without further ado, now you know who I am. Let's get into the tale. <laughs> yeah, I agree with those. <laughs> Our journey begins in the second patch of Battle for Azeroth. <laughs> with the second raid of the expansion, the Battle for Dazor Alor. At the time, since I was such a fan of Jada Proudmoore, the idea of fighting her as a raid boss seemed awesome. And thus, I was going to bite the bullet and commit to progressing through the raid to battle Jaina herself. I therefore chose to join the raid team in the guild for my horde characters. Now we swept through normal mode, and we began our progression into heroic as a healer on my priest. The first boss wasn't hard, but the second one, Grong the Ape, I despised. Why? On heroic? Between the AoEs coming at us so fast, and the chain attack of tank busters that would kill our tanks half the time, it was a grueling gauntlet to fight through wrong heroic <laughs> especially as a healer struggling to keep everyone alive alas slowly but surely our progress raids raids on grong raids we made progress and through a lot of perseverance and a little dumb luck after two weeks we killed that monkey not supposed to be that way i'm not saying that like if this happens to you you're really bad but it should not take any raid team two weeks to kill grong heroic that's that's not okay okay that's that's not all right look i'm not judge i'm not gonna shoot you down but 
We then moved on to the third boss, the monk, the monk and mage duo. Surprisingly, we killed that in just a few tries. And as we were progressing to opulence, something peculiar happened to change the course of my experience for the rest of the raid. While I was doing well enough healing, I personally was proud to heal the melee side of a raid as discipline against the golem and trap gauntlet. It was brought up amongst the raid that because so much of our DPS players were casters, it would benefit us to have a mage in the group. Yeah. <laughs> what are you, like seven warlocks? What's going on? The fuck? It is not one mage. <sighs> it was announced. Uh, does anybody have an alt mage? Yes. Yes, I do. I had one. A nightborn that mostly rolled as arcane or frost. And so my priest was replaced for my mage. And after a little more progression that I enjoyed as frost, there's something satisfying about a thick, juicy, girthy glacial spike. True. Uh, we, f we felled the living treasure and moved on. The next fight was the Conclave of the Chosen. It took some time for us to figure out the kill priority and how to kite raptors, and after that was Rasta Khan. Thematically, it was a fun fight, especially with Bob Salami joining in the fray. But it took us more time than I'd have liked to kill him. In total, it took just over three weeks as we sorted who was staying above with the king and went downstairs, which took over a week of progress to assign. It took you over a week to figure out how to divide the group into? <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but we got there. That's all that matters. You got there. You kept pushing and you got there. We then reached the infamous no boss, the high Tinker Mecha Talk in his robo suit. We were pretty confident on clearing this boss, or at least I was. In theory, most of the mechanics were simple. There were times when healers needed to heal more, and we had a nice long discussion of how to deal with robot hijacking. The plan we had was simple, my friends. The people who got shrunk would jump into the robots, look at the colors above each robot, and one person at a time would call out the sequence of colors for another person's robot to click until all of them could deactivate their robots by pressing the button. Okay, I think in Heroic, it's three. You have one person tell everybody. It's so much easier. So much easier. But either way works. It's fine. As we made progress, I knew in the back of my mind, I would get a chance at this moment to call out. And I was ready. I was eager, in fact, excited to get inside that robot and start calling the colors. I was looking forward to rising to the occasion and calling out the colors to breeze through this mechanic and resume blasting the boss. Finally, during one of our attempts, the moment came when I was one of the few players who got shrunk. I beelined it to the nearest robot, jumped in, and listened on the comms for who would call out colors first. Are you colorblind? Are you fucking colorblind? Oh no. But as I waited for my turn, I suddenly, to my shock and horror, realized something. Up till this point, as we had discussed and got familiar with it, we would call out the colors of the symbols flashing above each, each robot. Red, yellow, green, blue, or purple. And up to this point, I had not been in a robot and seen the colors myself. So when I looked at the colors above the robots, I couldn't tell them apart. I couldn't tell which was blue, which was purple, nor which was green or which was yellow. And despite seeing said, clear, said colors clearly on my own robots board, I was in such a panic, I didn't simply match the colors before me to the symbols I saw across the field. As I'm slack-jawed and trying to figure out this, it was my turn to call out. And so I thought I'll do the next best thing. I'll call out what the symbol is. Wrench, chicken, screw. Wrench, chicken, screw. 
Wrench, chicken, screw. What the fuck was the reply I got? And unfortunately, this confusion cost us time. The bots and the dots overwhelmed us. And thus, I had to admit something to the raid that is usually something so minimal to my existence. I honestly, and I swear to you and other people in my position will tell you the same. I forget I even have this issue. I'm partially colorblind. I can see the primary colors just fine. But shades, I have a hard time telling them apart. To my utter shock and belief, these shades are the colors that were being used on the fight. That's what we were supposed to be calling out. After some listening to the sound of face palms from the other side of the screen, the raid team, to my benefit, was really cool about it. And one of the players pointed out is, just turn on colorblind mode. I had forgotten about my issue for so long, I didn't even look to check about a colorblind mode. I didn't even know it was there. But the damage was already done, my friends. I was so upset and thrown by a raid boss mechanic calling out my disability that is rarely ever a problem. I was no longer in the right, right mindset to continue progress for the whole night. And I asked to be replaced. Oh, that's really sad. That's super sad. Oh, no way. <laughs> the team understood. It had been a long night of progress with us clearing the former two encounters. And I bowed out before they carried on progress for the rest of the night. Oh, that sucks. Shouldn't let it get you down that much. The next evening, though, I felt renewed, reinvigorated. We were scheduled to raid. I couldn't make it. <laughs> now, I want to be clear. This wasn't because of my disability against Mechatalk, but a wedding ceremony and reception I was obliged to attend. A part of me was bothered about missing raids, but another part of me was, fuck you, you colorblind mocking bastard. Fortunately for me, that break became a complete pass. When I showed up to the raid the following night, I found out to my impressed surprise that the team not only demolished the big robot suit, but they had also killed the penultimate boss, Stormwall Blockade. Although I had experience of that fight from our normal progression, it was a fight I wasn't looking forward to, as I remembered that it took us quite a couple of weeks to defeat that boss on normal. Yikes. <laughs> this raid team. Thus, <laughs> I shouldn't judge. I shouldn't, I shouldn't stuff. I shouldn't, I shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't judge. I shouldn't judge. Thus, to find they smoked the heroic version in one night was a boost of morale for not only me, but for the whole team and a stroke of luck. It was just what I needed. At last, there we were, my friends. The whole reason I had rejoined raiding in the first place. We were standing on the deck of the ship, facing down the one, the only, Jaina Proudmoore. We knew the mechanics. We were familiar with the phases and transitions. And we were confident we could beat her within an hour. Right, uh, good luck. You sound like when Roger Brown came to me and said, we'll definitely kill Tindril before dinner. Didn't work out that way, did it? <laughs> Didn't work out that way. <laughs> well, that one glorious hour became two. And then two became three. And then three became more. I'm sorry to say we could not kill Jaina that night. Since we had been away from her fight for so long on normal, focusing so much on heroic only and not re-clearing normal, we were sloppy. Movement was bad, priorities to clear mechanics, surviving transitions wasn't for us. I for one couldn't believe people were still prematurely interrupting Jaina before- Oh no! Yeah, fuck you. If you interrupted Jaina before we got past the tornadoes, you're an absolute clown. You fucking clown. Shut the fuck up. It was never me. I had made sure that Counterspell was taken off my action bars. I don't do that either. That's ridiculous. What the f- <laughs> Just don't press the fucking button. It's really not that hard. And there were too many times we would have a bad pull back on the ship or people didn't time getting the flame patches before Jaina's Novas. Or they failed to focus down frozen people in the second phase. 
Suffice to say, we were all off and the morale that we had built up was falling apart. And eventually, we made the unprecedented call to add another raid night to our week. Knowing we were so close to finishing Heroic, to completing the raid, to finding the rhythm needed to send Jaina packing, we agreed. We will go into overtime, police. The next night, I was amped and I was ready to go. I was so looking forward to defeating Jaina as my mage, especially as I was fighting ice with ice, and the role player in me was just living the dream. But as our raid group was forming, my friends, and getting onto the ship, I noticed that more people were joining the group. We were adding pugs from the group finder. Like PTSD, it started happening again. I started getting flashbacks to my time raiding in Legion when our guild skipped normal and went straight to heroic. I knew this was a bad idea. We shouldn't do this. Panic started to genuinely set in. Sure enough, for the first hour of attempts, they would come, make mistakes. We had gotten over the previous night and then they would leave the group again. Once we finally stopped pugging and reduced our group to about 12 players, things clicked. We made progress, and our next few attempts got us the DPS check of the ice wall and beyond. As we neared midnight on this extra day that we had raided, we could get to the wall. Despite our fatigue, and perhaps Scripe is right and sleep is an illusion. No, <laughs> Scripe is wrong. <laughs> Scripe is wrong. And make real progress on the third and final phase of the fight. Figuring out surely but painfully when to free the players from ice and when to sacrifice them so we could push into Jaina herself. Then sometime after the stroke of midnight, we were in the final phase. We pulled off, allowing most of us to get frozen and broken out, and we funneled all our damage into Jaina. In the moment after a long night of trials, errors, misfortune, frustration, and pugs, it seemed like a miracle. Her health melted on that frozen wasteland like water breaking through a dam. And just as people started to bleed out from getting frozen again, letting them go to keep up the pressure, she gave up. She yielded. The achievement flashed on my screen. She froze herself and fled, and we rejoiced over comms and in-game to have finally cleared the entire raid on Heroic. Our little guild that had been pushing normal for weeks was now standing here on the corpse of the final boss. Having achieved my personal goal by being part of the guild's goal to clear the raid, I was both satisfied with our united accomplishment and relieved that at least I never had to raid again. <laughs> the guild convinced me to try out Mythic. I didn't stick around for that shit show. <laughs> Even if they told me we could just zerg down the first boss and rush it, and some partial farming on Heroic, but by then my Priest and Mage had got plenty of stuff from progress raiding, and I was spreading my gameplay back to other characters. For the next patch, I changed gears and decided I would try to defeat Ashara in the Eternal Palace as a hunter. And eventually I did get that goal. However, I never got ahead of the curve that raid. I settled for just a normal mode. I found friction in the Alliance Guild I was in. I was getting a bad taste in my mouth when the raid leader demanded... I had to use an Azerite essence that would sync with other raiders. It was an essence that you had to farm from island expeditions. And that, my friends, was never going to happen. <laughs> Is that blood of the enemy? It's not, right? Which one did you get from there? The laser thing? Between that and a few of my other characters managed to get a shower of staff through weekly quest loots. And any lingering itches for me to raid in that patch were all washed away. World vein? It was the uh, uh, shards on the ground, world resonance. I can't remember which one it was. The laser, I think it was the laser thing. Fucking garbage. And my last experience of raiding in Battle for Azeroth would be a few doomed attempts at progressing Nihilotha. Alliance side. <laughs> I was lucky enough to hop into Guild Run and kill Nazoth on Heroic as my demon hunter on the Horde, which seemed to be killing Nazoth in pugs very regularly. <laughs> By that time, my interest in raiding altogether becomes slimmer and slimmer as I was able to get several characters decently geared through M plus or weekly quests, and it felt more accomplished for completing the visions of Nazoth with all masks on my mage and Demon Hunter solo than actually killing Nazoth himself. Then we moved into the Shadowlands, my friends. Yes. We moved into the Shadowlands. 
After that honeymoon phase of the first patch where I focused more on leveling my characters than doing any endgame content, I gradually came to experience the dread of having too many things to do before I could just play the fucking game. <laughs> Yeah, good luck with your 15 characters now, you wanker. <laughs> Tour guest. All day, every day. Ba ba ba. Tour guest. The more. Corfia. Covenant dailies. All that effort to get some shitty fucking anima that I was supposed to put into updating sanctums instead of getting transmog. And I had to do it per character. It killed. It killed the game. That had stayed strong since Mr. Pandari with me. With those nails wrapped in the coffin already. The preceding news of scandals at Blizzard. And the huge disappointment I felt for the patches lore were the final nails. Shadowlands killed World of Warcraft for me. And I let it drift away. I turned my back and walked away. And joined the, em the emigration to Final Fantasy XIV. Flash forward to now, I'm playing both Retail WoW and 14, and I have absolutely no desire nor need to raid in World of Warcraft. There are already so many things I don't care for when attempting that content. Can you imagine how much of a nerd you have to be to prepare before a raid? Maybe even summon people, clear boring trash, run back to the boss after dying? And <laughs> you gotta be such a nerd <laughs> to want to do that stuff. Such a nerd. And nowadays, I can and have gotten raid gear for all my characters without ever having to step foot in the goddamn raid. So in those few years between Legion and Shadowlands, I came to accept, raiding's not for me. However, I gained enough experience and memories to appreciate its potential and rewards, and I will always look back on my ahead-of-the-curve endeavor in Battle for Azeroth as a bittersweet reminder of how fun raiding can be. None of what you've done today sounds fun at all. None of it. It all sounds terrible. Every, I, everything you've said sounds bad. It's, it sounds like you've just eaten nothing but moldy sandwiches for like eight years and then discovered that it doesn't need to be that way. Everything sounds terrible and horrendous. Even if this boss exposes your disabilities, thank you for meeting my tail, Preacher. Cheers to you and your chat, and God bless you all. Well, God bless you and Merry Christmas as we do come to the end of drama for today wonderful wonderful time and i'm sorry that the boss did that to you that's really sad ladies and gentlemen that is the end of streaming for today but of course on monday it is the beginning of the rebuilding of our studio we will be having a subathon it's going to be super fun there's loads of stuff for you i'm really excited no doubt something's going to be scuffed and fucked up at the start it's going to be a hell of a thing but i'm looking forward to it we've got a super one fun week coming i know the path of exile patch comes out tonight i know affliction launches tonight i can't i have to get a van and i have to move all my shit uh i have to empty a unit i can literally cannot play poe which is a bummer but i will see you then all right my friends i will see you then have a great weekend wish us the best and we'll see you soon and get logged into the queue for poe bye everybody Emma stream is in like three hours. Yes, Emma's streaming in three hours. Apparently you're all having curry tonight. Enjoy. <laughs>